Hello there. My name is Max Smolax, editor at AI Business, an online publication dedicated to artificial intelligence. And today we're taking a look at the AI Readiness Barometer, a new service from Amdia that tracks um, AI readiness for major businesses. And to talk more about the new service, I'm pleased to welcome Mark Beckhew, a principal analyst at Amdia and one of the people behind this report. Uh, so welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks, Max. Good to be here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my first question is, why is there a need for such a survey? How does it respond to industry trends? Right, it, it's, it's a great question, Max. We have been thinking about AI here at Omdia for uh, four or five years and tracking uh, market, kind of how the market's moving into adoption, um, you know, and what, what you kind of saw over time, if you think about a brand new kind of technology or a set of technologies is, you have these early adopters and they're thinking about, um, you know, they do a lot of testing and they do a lot of uh, proof of concepts and, you know, they're, they're, there's no real precedence for how they do something. And as we've gotten along, you know, we've, we've had more and more uh, companies adopt AI and actually operationalize it. Uh, you move into a curve where you have early adopters and you start to get into fast followers, right? So the market starts to widen. And what the problem was, if you think about enterprises or organizations that are trying to, um, you know, implement AI, is what's their what's their playbook? What do they what do they how do they know what to do? And we really felt like there was a place in the market where we wanted to help uh, give information to companies about what can you do to uh, operationalize AI. And one of the first things you do is sit there and say, well, how ready am I for this? I don't know anything. And, and, you know, you've been doing a lot of reporting about this. One of the biggest problems is that companies don't know what they don't know. So uh, it's not like just getting new software. Uh, and AI is much more complex. There's really a, a life cycle and an organizational issues. And there's, you know, data governance issues. And we'll get into that in a minute. But the, all of these things were like, hold on, you know, as these companies start to adopt these things, they really need kind of a way to understand what they need to do. And so that's why we built this uh, tool. Uh, the AI readiness tool is an assessment and it allows uh, companies to look and rate themselves and say, well, how good am I at these four things? We saw four key areas and uh, they rate themselves. And then they're able to benchmark themselves against uh, companies within their uh, vertical industries uh, by company size and by region where we have it. Yes. So you're not talking about specific companies, but generally, if you want to make get a sense of what your competitors are doing, this is this is the, the document to peruse. Correct. We, we the, what we've done is built a database, and we've benchmarked over 500 companies. They're globally dispersed. Uh, they're also vertically dispersed, and we have um, a decent amount of data across mm, seven or eight different verticals. Mm -hmm. So let's say it's financial services. You can look at financial services and see how you are benchmarked in terms of your AI readiness against financial services. Okay, brilliant. And the first edition is out. It is available to download for free free. So what are some of the key takeaways for you personally from this report? Was there something unusual, something that surprised you, or is it kind of like, you know, like this is just a uh, picture of the industry, you know, like, and this is what it means? Good. That's good. And I forgot, you asked me this and I forgot to answer it, but the barometer is actually uh, our take of some of the overall findings within a, the, within the readiness tool. So if a company goes and buys this or gets into something and takes the readiness assessment, they're seeing how they look, you know, like what their assessment is. What we did is we took, we're calling the barometer is really a, a reading of all of the our findings. So to your point, set that up. Um, what we're finding is we have um, an overall rate, right, for readiness. And then we, with that overall rating is based on four pillars. So each company takes a, an assessment across four pillars, strategy, <clears throat> organization, uh, their technology and um, operations readiness, and then uh, data, data governance. So when you go through those things, what we found is that, we, and we rate them in, we put them in four buckets. There's AI novice, uh, uh, excuse me, AI beginner, AI competent, AI proficient, and then AI advanced. And as you would 
obviously kind of figure, um, the market is not into AI advanced so much. Really where the core of the market is, <clears throat> is in that second uh, stage, which is called AI competent. And what we found as far as the overall kind of findings for that is that uh, we had, let's see, 55 percent of our database uh, of those people that we took the assessment fell into this category of AI competent. And what we um, what we excuse me, 52 percent. And what that really says is the kind of if you looked at the profile of that, it meant that they probably are decent at their strategy. They figured out what to do with strategy and they've started to work on their organization. Mm -hmm. What they don't have a lot of is, you know, necessarily really operationalized in the technology area. So, you know, that, that makes sense. You, you've started to make your investments are first in the strategy and how you want your organization to look. And then you continue to add your money and experience into how I roll out the technology. And then that big one, which Max, I know you know this is like, data and how you govern data because the data part is really really critical and we kept finding that that's really tripping companies up as far as moving into more readiness those other readiness stages mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and it's it, it's interesting because yeah yeah sort of like I, I would expect you know like technology to be a little bit better because like there's so many options you know like seems like everybody's selling AI hardware AI software but yes yeah, so the adoption is still not there or at least the proficiency and right. And if you think about what you're saying there, they've thought about these things from uh, you, you start to look at it more as a life cycle. Right. What we saw in the early stages of AI adoption were very point to point ideas. Right. So a, a business function might say this sounds like a good idea. Let's test it. Let's see what happens and roll it out. And when they when they moved along, if you kind of even those companies that did like one idea, wh whether it was a virtual assistant or you know, uh, CMX kinds of things or anything like that, they found that it really touched a lot of other parts of their organization. So they're like, well, wait a second, is there other things that we can, we have to do as an organization to kind of be ready? And, and that was, okay, well, do we make technology investments or do we outsource all of this? And as you mature, you know, obviously those things come into play where you're doing more of those investments yourself to say, well, how do I how do I centralize my AI in, uh, IP, right, yeah. and things like that? So that's why it's it, those kind of lag a little bit um, for for the market. Okay, and how is important? How important is industry participation in this project? You know, like what can businesses do to take part, and what benefits do, can they expect? Right. You know, we wanted to. So the the, the barometer uh, is our. Or, or what we'd like to do is create and give this to um, the business community so that they can gauge how they're doing. And the more we get people to participate, and we have a link, you can take this survey and it goes into our, our database uh, and it just builds more intelligence around what readiness looks like for AI. So to us, it's like the more that uh, companies just take this uh, assessment uh, and, and see how they look, um, then they're going to build this benchmarking data. And what we have built there is it's, it's a general. So I told you about what our general findings are, but we have it by vertical. We have it by um, company size. So, you know, I'll give you an example. You think of companies that are smaller versus companies that are larger. I have a, a split where we say companies that are a billion dollars more in revenue versus companies that are smaller than uh, that. And you can well imagine that typically uh, the companies that have uh, more revenue are a little more advanced than the others, right? And then we see splits by region and we kind of have some interesting um, data that's coming back to us about how they are by vertical. And you and I were talking earlier, it's like, oh, it's interesting. The IT industry is a little ahead of everybody. Well, that kind of makes a little sense, right? Because they've been thinking about these things a little bit, but you'd be surprised uh, at the, the report that we have will tell you some of these things and some of those findings. So we hope that that really helps them continue to operationalize AI and that they get help um, to operationalize AI. Yes. 
OK, last question, and this wasn't on the docket, but I just want to get your thoughts on this idea that, you know, like the, the, the faster you jump on the AI bandwagon, the, the, the better the ultimate benefits will be. But this idea that your competitors, if you're adopting AI earlier than them, they will never be able to catch up because I heard this expressed several times. So mm. do you think, you know, like this is actually grounded in reality or this is, you know, wishful thinking, you know, like yeah. does AI provide this much of an advantage? Yeah, that's a great question. I. I have a, a couple of views on that. One would be when we watched COVID, think about how COVID impacted so many things. And we were really hearing across the board that you had this uh, converse kind of interesting investment in AI when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. What I would say there is a lot of companies that were doing it were not just starting. These were companies that already had dipped their toes into, into AI. So what it was is think of it as that people that had started down the path doubled down because they said, okay, we're already in, we're going to do this. And what we also saw is that companies that had not started in AI didn't go forward because they couldn't. They, they're, they're hurt by, you know, the, the, what COVID was doing to their economics, how they had to draw back, all those kinds of things. So what you had is a gap, right? So you had an acceleration of these early adopters like, okay, let's go, let's go. And they started, uh, you know, investing more and seeing more. That's it, so let's just set that aside. So there is a gap, but think about traditional and classic uh, market adoption, right? If you think about the technology adoption curve, you know, you have pioneers, you have these people that are just willing to take risk and go out there and they make these investments and they see early results. Well, what that does is it helps the vendor community get smart and get scaled. So what happens and the whole reason the bell, the bell curve works the way it does is because the vendor community gets better at what they're doing and they get more scalable and they get cheaper. So what happens is if you're, uh, if you're in this curve and you're an early adopter, well, you're getting some benefits. But if you move along, the, sh the, 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 the solutions to you get sharper. They get, they get scalable. They get pr easier to, to pay for. And there's proof points. So all of a sudden, you can catch up pretty quickly if you're willing to jump in because now you have proven uh, solutions. And I think that's kind of the balance is that um, you may have a gap for a, bit, a little bit, but you might catch up. Yes, yes, yes. And, and have we entered this kind of better solutions age? You know, like, do you think like AI has been productized to the to, to the level where it's just like you can get something off the shelf and get like almost the same benefits as the guys who built it all by hand? Uh, in some instances, yes, uh, it, it depends. And, you know, uh, across the, AI is so vast. We really we track over 200 uh, distinct use cases that we watch the market spend on. And some are much more advanced than others. So you think about the maturity of those. They're moving forward as, at, at this rapid pace. And then there's kind of like this general trend that we're seeing, which is platformization. You know, so you get this kind of tension in AI where companies would really like to own their IP. They, that has been, a, you know, you think about technology and how that's always the case with companies. They really want to own their intellectual property. So they tend to look for tools that help them build things themselves and take advantage of other things, right? So uh, really interesting dynamics there. Uh, allow uh, that market to move a little faster, you know, and that's kind of what's pushing it a little bit. But yes, there's there's things that are much more available. It's it, there. Some of them are maturing where you're able to get all these tools and people say, OK, I don't have to be a data scientist to do these things. So you got the low code, no code. And that's part of what uh, the maturity of the market is uh, showing us. OK, well, um, that's everything we have time for today. But Mark, this has been a very, very interesting look at the kind of the snapshot of the industry. And um, yeah, good luck with the with the uh, barometer survey. And I hope this is not not the last edition and we're going to hear a lot more about this. That's true. We hope to put this out um, when we have updated those data, that data, uh, you know, our cadence to that's going to really depend on how much benchmarking material we get. Uh, but we hope to be back with this and refresh it on a regular basis. All right, and, and we're going to be here to find out about the findings. Well, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Max. Wow.